It's time for the finals for the greatest fall niche fragrance of all time tournament. The final two fragrances are going head to head and you are going to vote to decide the winner. The best fall fragrance for men, niche edition. Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Yes, I am shooting this video in January. Yeah, we're past fall a little bit, but we're gonna see this tournament through to the end and crown a winner. This is the final round. Let's jump into it. I just wanna say one thing too. You guys have been really, really good about voting for these fragrances, so I'm proud of you. Give yourselves a pat on the back. In the initial round for this niche tournament, the highest vote getting matchup got four and a half thousand votes. That was the absolute top of the first four matchups. The lowest got 3.8 thousand. Now in the last matchup, there were seven and a half thousand votes. That's a big increase and I wanna see more votes here than seven and a half thousand, so let's do it. Now I'm gonna do a quick recap just to show you guys how we got to where we got. And just as a quick reminder as well, these matchups and these seedings were determined by you guys. I actually put up a poll and you voted which fragrances you thought were the best niche for fall. And then based off of which fragrances got the most votes, I seeded them appropriately. So the fragrance that got the most votes was ranked number one, and then down to number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So in the initial matchup, the very first matchup, we had the number one seed, which is Parfums de Marly, going up against the number eight seed, Nashane Ani. And this was not close at all. Leighton won with 78% of the vote and moved on, and Ani unfortunately was not able to overcome the number one seed. Then we had matchup two, which had the number five seed, Black Phantom, from By Killian, going up against the number four seed, Tom Ford's Tobacco Vani. And once again, the favorite one, Tobacco Vani, won with 59% of the vote. And then in matchup three, we had the number three seed, Parfums de Marley Herod, going up against the number six seed, based on Francis Kirchon, Grand Soir. And this one also was not really close. Herod won with 69% of the vote, and that one was much more lopsided than I actually anticipated. And then in matchup four, we had the closest matchup of the tournament so far. It was Red Tobacco from Mancera, the number seven seed, going up against Naxos from Zerzhov, the number two seed. This one went back and forth, back and forth. One fragrance was ahead, then the other would pull ahead, and it kept waffling until the end, where Naxos won 51% to 49%. That set up round two, which is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. The winners from round two are in the finals, and that's what you will be voting on. And actually, as of right now, on my community tab on YouTube, that poll is active. Well, assuming you're not watching this in the future. If you're watching this in the future, it is no longer there. <laughs> but go there after you watch this video and vote for who you think should win. Best men's fall niche fragrance. The winner is going to be retired into the imaginary Jensen's Hall of Fame, where they will be enshrined forever as one of the best fragrances for men and also they won't be allowed in any future tournaments. So, first matchup of round two was Parfums de Marly Leighton, this one going up against the number four seed, Tom Ford Tobacco Vani. And this one was the most popular matchup to be voted on, seven and a half thousand votes from you guys. Which one do you think won? Leighton, Tobacco Vani, Leighton, Tobacco Vani. Leighton, and actually, it wasn't all that close. Leighton won 64% of the vote. So poor Tom Ford here only got 36. And I think this really just goes to show you how popular Leighton is as a mainstream niche fragrance. This one has extreme wearability, extreme compliment factor, and that really is what's pushing it in this tournament, I feel like. This one has apple, vanilla, lavender, cardamom, and sandalwood. It's warm, it's spicy, it's really sexy, 
This one is a great date night fragrance, a great night out fragrance, but also is office safe and is great for casual wear. Basically, you can use it anywhere. So not a huge surprise, I guess, to see this number one seed just absolutely crushing it in this tournament. It's really not even come close in the two matchups so far to being defeated not even within 10 percentage points. So Parfums de Marley Layton, the number one seed, is in the finals. Then we had the second matchup, which was between the number three seed, Parfums de Marley Herod, once again, and the number two seed, Sergeop Naxos. And I talked about this originally, but Parfums de Marley actually had more fragrances in this tournament that I did not allow. I didn't want, you know, four different Parfums de Marley fragrances in this tournament, so I just kept the top two, which was Leighton and Herod. So, in this matchup, tobacco against tobacco. This one, Herod, more affordable when you're talking about discounters. This one, Naxos, a lot of people would say uh, more luxurious, a little bit higher end. This one, a honeyed tobacco fragrance. Some people say like a niche version of Pure Havan from Mugler. This one does have vanilla, it does have tobacco, so you have that sweetness in there. You've also got cinnamon, which you'll find cinnamon in here as well. But this one has osmanthus and incense, which sets it apart a little bit. This matchup between two tobacco heavy hitters was a complete landslide. It was not remotely close. I didn't really expect that, but in hindsight, maybe I should have. If you look at the matchup between this one, the number two seed against the number seven seed, red tobacco, it was super close within a couple percentage points. And this one blew its matchup out of the water. And this time, it blew Naxos out of the water even more than its original matchup against Grand Soir. 71% of the vote went to Herod, 29% to Naxos. Now I did see some people comment in that matchup on the community tab where they said, a lot of people are probably voting for this one because they've never smelled that one and they don't own that one, but they do own this one. I think that's possible because Herod, being a Parfums de Marly, has much wider distribution as far as discounters go, being able to pick it up on the cheap than this one. Me personally, if I could only keep one of these, I would keep this one, but Herod destroyed Naxos. So that sets our finals to determine for 2020 the best men's fall niche fragrance of all time. <laughs> Leighton Herod. PDM, PDM. These are your options. Go to the community tab, cast your vote. Is Leighton going to crush Herod or can Herod upset Leighton? I have a pretty good idea of what I think is going to win, but I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to influence the vote. And the winner of this tournament, like I said, gets enshrined into the Make Believe Hall of Fame, uh, Gent Sense Hall of Fame, and is retired from tournaments. So one of these is gonna go up to uh, Fragrance Heaven or, or something. It's just gonna go away. All right, guys, sound off in the comments below about how these matchups played out. I imagine a lot of you out there are okay with how this played out, and some of you out there are not at all, especially the fans of this one right here, and uh, also very sad for Tobacco Vanille, total classic. So yeah, let me know what you think about those matchups. Let me know what you think about the finals matchup. And again, these seedings were determined by you guys, so fight amongst yourselves. As always guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you soon with the winner and the best niche fall fragrance of all time, according to this tournament, which is not scientific at all. All right guys, see you later. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video.